Now, welcome to this 22nd topic in this course. We're looking at handling data in algorithms. That's the official title from a specification. Not a great title, to be honest. It doesn't really describe what we're doing. We're looking really at some theory behind some key points in programming, um, such as variables, constants, data types, and arrays specifically. Um, so let's get straight into it. First of all, let's have a look at variables and constants. You'll probably, one of the first things you've done when you code is talking about variables and using variables. They're really key in so many ways in computer science. They really are for the foundation of coding. So um, looking from a theory kind of point of view, um, the, technically, the technical term is they're both identifiers, meaning that they're like containers for values. So for we, they're called identifiers mainly because they're assigned with values which can be referenced by the programmer with the name given. That's where identifier comes from. The name is used to um, be ref as a reference point to these values that are contained within them that are assigned to the identifier. So technically, the identifier is sort of this, but the name given. Um, but we sort of call them identifiers. You may not need to know this. I'm just um, trying to be as complete as possible. And technically, constants are just types of variable, just with special properties. But we'll look at that in more de detail in a second. So here, it's really good to start looking at code with kind of like an analytical type view. So in English you might look at a sentence and decompose it into different types of words with you know connotations etc. Um, in computer science you're really trying to decompose code and looking at exactly what it's doing. You may understand what it's doing but it's good to get in the habit of explaining it in as much detail as possible. So here what's happening, we've got the value 10, this integer, being assigned to the variable var, I've called it here, and that's the identifier in this variable. Um, and then we've got the function print and We've got our parameter here for a function, um, and var is the parameter. It, it's contained within the parameter, which gets passed to the subroutine. I mean, in fact, the actual argument, the actual bit of data that's passed to the function, the function print is 10 because it's the value of var. So I'm going to a bit, maybe a bit too much detail here, but it, like I said, it's good to get in the habit of sort of talking like this, especially in your exam, um, sort of describe it in a lot of detail. Uh, sorry, not in your exam, in controlled assessment, but maybe not in so much detail in your exam. But regardless, it's good to know, especially, um, so also variables and constants can be declared with certain properties. So um, declaration sort of implies that it's done right at the start, and this often happens. I mean, you can start off your code just assigning it, but you can also declare it with certain properties. And this is maybe more obvious and slightly in uh, different programming languages compared to Python, so I should mention I'm using Python here, um, as I've done in all the other videos. Um, but it's not that clear cut, but what we're doing in this little bit of code, we're declaring this value, this, this variable x, as a string. And a string is a type of data type, as we'll look at next. Um, but what this means is it means that instead of an integer being assigned to this of his variable x, a strings um, assigned instead, which which we've declared. So that's just a bit of bit more theory there. But if you want to, I know some people like to really define things. So here's quite a, a definition for variables. So variables are structures that hold data. The value assigned is held until it's changed or the program completes. And therefore, this is a key bit. A variable's value can be changed during a program's execution. So here we've got a bit of code that just shows this change happening. We've got a variable assigned with 10, and afterwards I change it. I change it from 10 to a string, and clearly it shows that variables have the ability to change during execution, which is key because co constants, as the name suggests, don't. They don't change. They're the same with Variables. I mentioned that they're sort of like a type of variable, but regardless, um, the structures of whole data, the value assigned is held until the program completes, not until it's changed, um, because it can't be changed. It, as soon as it's assigned or declared, it doesn't change through the execution. So in Python, um, like I said, I, I could could have changed to another language here, but I've used Python, and I know a lot of people use Python in this GCSE, so I'm keeping with that. But an example in another area is um, the first one I thought, thought of was in maths. So we've got a quadratic here, or a polynomial, whatever you want to call it. And in red, we've got our constants in this equation. Um, so we've got a, b, and c, and often these will be often this is one, this is maybe five, or yeah, it doesn't actually matter. But this will change whatever. Then we've got our our variables x here and often instead of y you see f of x in maths especially as you progress to sort of a level maths um, you see f of x instead of y and this is what we're saying it's a function of x so we pass a value of x say 5 into this function and we replace these variables with 
that value. And that's just an example of an everyday life using variables and constants. Um, I just thought I would add that in there. Anyway, I've mentioned we're going to talk about data types. So this is quite an in, um, obviously absolutely fundamental idea, but it's slightly difficult to explain. But really what data types are, they're classifications to, to distinguish between types of data. I and mean, one of the reasons that's quite difficult to explain is because it's difficult to define them without using the actual words. I mean, I've, yeah, but I'm sure you'll get away with it if they do ask you to define it because it's, I can't think of any other way to sort of explain it. So data, so the reason we have data types is that um, there's lots of forms of data. There's words, there's le uh, letters, individual letters, there's numbers. Um, and a computer needs to be able to distinguish between these types of data in order to know what operations can be performed on what. Um, this actually ties in fairly nicely with a video I did on instructions in terms of like bit patterns, which I did a while ago, which I'd recommend you watch anyway, but um, it maybe is quite good uh, to consolidate this. But we want to look at five main types of data type. I mean, it's probably the five ones you actually ever use. Um, first of which is an integer. And an integer, you should hopefully would know from maths, is simply a whole number. So an example is 5, 10, 30 whole number so 30.5 is not an integer it's not a whole number a boolean is a boolean data type is one of two values so you either usually it's true or false um, we looked at a video on boolean logic at the start with like the second video um, and yeah a boolean is is either false or true and false is usually represented by the binary value zero and true by one a real also known as a float um, you'll the example would want, want you to know of it as a real, not a float. So float, it's called float because of flo floating point numbers, um, which is basically just a decimal or fractional number, but you want to call it real. So an example is 8.2 half, two thirds, that's an example of a real. A character is just a single unit of information, so 5, A, even like a symbol, like a percentage symbol, that's a character. And often this is put in single quotes, like in Python it's got, it's got single quotes. And the string is just a sequence of these characters, like hello world, that's probably one of the first things you ever typed in in code. It's usually what you t they teach you first. And that's again, usually has two apostrophes. Um, so the reason why we use data types is that a computer needs to know, as I mentioned, what operations can be performed and what. It prevents um, distinguishing between the all these data types prevent serious errors occurring like a computer completely crashing because it tries to perform an operation that isn't possible so in real life you wouldn't be able to there's no logical way to divide a letter by a number it just doesn't make sense and so a computer obviously can't do that it's not programmed to it if, if we can't do it as intelligent humans a computer can't do it and so it will only divide with integers and, and or reals so it only can divide by numbers basically and what this means is that um, you need to distinguish between the two. Um, so here I've just got an example. So I'm doing exactly what I just said. I'm dividing a integer here by a string, and clearly we get an error here. And I don't know exactly how Python IDE works. I don't know the code behind it. But again, looking at it from a computer science perspective, we analyze what this is saying. I mean, the next video is actually on errors, but regardless so what it's saying here basically as we would expect it's got an unsupported operand type in the bit pattern video in the instruction video we looked at operands and operators the operand is the data passed sorry the data in part of an instruction so what it's saying is it's got an issue with the data given to it, it doesn't mind this divide this slash doesn't mind the divide that's the operator but it doesn't like the operands here the data and clearly that's true because it doesn't like the fact that you're dividing an integer by a string and obviously there's it seems like there's been sort of catchment in python that stops it being run properly otherwise you'd encounter a serious error so that's why data types are used hopefully that makes sense it's quite difficult for me to explain um, but once you understand it it's not that difficult to really um, think about so finally we're going to look at different types of operators different ways to sort of um, write expressions or equations in programming languages there's three main types uh, boolean arithmetic and comparison um, and they're sort of written slightly differently in different languages these are just examples and there's a few more as well so yeah just do a couple of examples here i suppose um so here we're using a boolean operator or in Python it's written lowercase doesn't really matter so what it's saying here if number one variable number one or number two 
is equal so we're also using comparator compar uh, comparison operator here uh, it prints pick a new number so just com it's either this variable or this number equals 2 or equals 0 and it's comparing the, this to 0 um, yeah so here we've got a function an addition function and again I've got our parameters here and it's um, using a arithmetic operator plus here quite simply and finally we've got an example of a boolean data type being given back to the program where what it's doing is comparing 5 to 10 and clearly 5 is not equal to 10 and so we get false back from the program okay sorry I think I said finally but no finally if you want to do is look at arrays so an array is an ordered arrangement of data elements and data elements are just data values or variables so you can use both and typical arrays are homogenous hopefully I've said that right um, but you want you to know what that means well you know mm, you want you to use that term but what that means is it means that the elements are of the same data type typically arrays consist of the same data type so all strings all integers all reals etc um, lists on the surface ostensibly are the same but typically they're heterogeneous however you say that meaning that they can, can be composed of different data types and in python actually um, lists replace arrays there aren't any arrays in python unless you use some modules but regardless so you, but on the surface they are the same the way they actually work slightly differently but that's definitely not a GCSE level topic um, so the, the elements in arrays are referenced by their location so it's basically just a group of elements stored together instead of separately um, and they're referenced by the location in a process called indexing and here you might think perhaps that um, we would get football back instead of cricket here in this little sport array because one this is the first object first element in this array but actually this is an example of zero indexing so python is one of the many languages that use zero indexing which means you start counting from zero so this position is zero this is the first position and this is the second position by with zero indexing which is why you get cricket back instead of football and the above example is an example of a one directional array and this just means that it's stored in one direction one horizontal direction and so it, you only use one number to index it you don't need to know about um, multi-dimensional or two-dimensional arrays um, but basically they store data in more than one direction so instead of just horizontal like this they store them vertically as well which means you have two numbers to index it instead it's also it's sort of like a list within a list or an array within an array but that's beyond your spec so you don't need to know anyway um, hopefully that video was useful hopefully I explained things okay slightly difficult to explain some of this stuff but anyway uh, next up is the last video I'm looking at testing so hopefully you'll join me for that